Hi everyone, my name is Francisco Colhano and this is Connected, the podcast of Nova Economics Club. This special podcast is related to our research projects that NEC development developed during the first semester. Today with us we have Isabel and Diogo who are representing the team that conducted a, a research project together with the Institute of Public Policy. First of all, Isabel, Diogo, welcome. Thank you. We are glad to have you here. So, we are going to do them a short question. This is just a 10-minute podcast for us to know a little bit more about their project. And we invite, first of all, all of you to go and read the project that NEC developed. So, first of all, what is the main goal of this research project? Well, for several years, Carriz had a set of problems that hindered its activity. For example, high levels of debt and consistent negative results. So, in 2017, the ownership of the company was transferred from the Portuguese state to the municipality of Lisbon. Therefore, the main goal of our project was to understand if this change was beneficial or not, and how is the company performing nowadays. Evidently, we based ourselves on the problems that existed at the time and try to understand if they have been solved or not. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I'm, I was, I'm going to ask you uh, which problems um, was the new government of Carriche able to solve and which problems was not. And if you believe that um, there are pre the, the plans that you developed during your project will be good for the future of the company. Talking first about the problems that were solved. The high level of debt was one of the main problems prior to 2017. But with the transferring ownership from the state to the municipality, Carriz debt was transferred to the state, turning Carriz into a debt-free company since then. Carriz then was, a, was being forced to pay high amounts of interest related to its debt. And to pay those interests, it needed to indebt itself more. But to explain these debt levels, there's something we need to understand, that is compensatory allowances. Compensatory allowances are money transfers from the state to the public companies in order to compensate them from providing a public service. These transfers are, cl are normally cl clearly stated in a contract, but in the case of Carriche and the Portuguese state, either the state was not paying the compensatory allowances or they were only paying in December, resulting in Carriche suffering losses throughout the year. But with a new contract with the municipality, Carriz now receives its allowances twice a year and re regularly than before. This has had positive impact in Carriz accounts. Since then, in the last four years, Carriz had positive numbers and in 2020, even with COVID-19, it is expected that the company makes a profit of four and a half million. Well, it is true that these problems were solved but we are aware that uh, the time frame in question is quite short because uh, it's only been four years since the change in governance. But talking about the problems that were not solved, we have the lack of presence from external regulators. And this is extremely important because Carriche is a public company and therefore it is accountable to Portuguese citizens. So, even if the coordination between um, external regulators um, might not be able to solve all problems, uh, we believe that a strong presence can definitely help not only Carriche, but also other um, public enterprises. Um, but talking about the future plans for the company, we are aware that In 2017, when there was the change in governance, um, Carriz set out a few goals for the next years, mainly um, reinforcing uh, the, an intermodal transport system with other transport companies, for, exa for example, uh, the Metropolitan de Lisboa, and also providing a more reliable service and sustainable um, 
service, which is extremely important, in our opinion, uh, given the rising pressure there is to use less private vehicles and rely more on public transportation. In spite of all of these, as we mentioned before, there are still some problems in the future of Carris. For example, the lack of presence from external regulators in the long run can have a negative impact in the company, since it gives to the citizens an image that the company is not transparent and that its managers are not accountable for the actions they take in the name of the company. Another problem, more focused on the time we live in, is the pandemic. This can have any, a negative impact on citizens' perspective about public transportation that may reduce Carriage revenues. Okay, thank you. Um, so, concluding, what was, in your opinion, and I want to hear both of us on this one, uh, the most challenging part of these research projects? What make it uh, difficult, but also rewarding? Um, I would say one of the hardest parts was balancing the research we all did, because at times we reached contradictory information. Because different cities have different needs and characteristics, so there isn't only one optimal public transportation system. Moreover, every suggestion we made was always limited by the legal framework in question, both the Portuguese and the European one. Yet another challenge we had was finding information on Portuguese authorities' websites. Most of the websites we found were often outdated and not user-friendly. So we had to consult several external links with inconsistent information and most times contradictory that made hard to find what's true and what is not true. So for transparency reasons, like we mentioned before, these are some issues that should be solved. Okay, do you also think that uh, the output you delivered to Institute of Public Policy was good? Do you think this partnership with NEC was beneficial for both parts? I think it was beneficial because in the final part of our work we give a different number of conclusions for the future as well as goals Carriche should establish to perform better and to provide a better service to the Portuguese citizens. Yeah, I, I think it is good. I mean, we had guidance, so we need to acknowledge it. And we thank the Institute of Public Poli uh, Policy for helping us. Um, so I would say we did a good job. <laughs> uh, and it is important that every citizen can access this kind of information because we're talking about a public service. So, yeah, I agree. So this is all from us. Once again, Isabel and Diogo, thank you so much for have, having, been, having, been, having been here with us today. Uh, we really appreciate your work and I strongly recommend each and every one of you to go to the NEC website and read the, the project we had with the Institute of Public Policy, but also all the other NEC projects. Once again, we thank you. And in the meanwhile, please check our social media for extra content with the podcast team. Stay connected. Mm -hmm.